all right so in this video we'll be going through the practical implication impl implementation of intensity transformation on images using python so in the last video we actually went in the theoretical part um on like what exactly happens in a, like uh, in, in, in intensity transformations on images but in this uh, video we will be actually going to implement it so what are we are going to cover in this notebook so we will cover image negatives low transformations power low transformations piecewise linear transformation functions and bit plane slicing okay so let's get going before that i need to import the libraries so uh, i will need three libraries as of now import cv to like use all the functions related to images then importing numpy as np to just uh, play around with the uh, matrices and then to show the images i will need uh, matplotlib so i'm importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt here and this thing is just um, like um, modifying one of the uh, parameters of uh, matplotlib where so, so why i'm using this is because when i'm drawing multiple plots something like this so i can have them more um, close to each other so if i don't use that it will be much far away from each other so this is why this line all right now first of all image negatives let's see what kind of image we are working with oh i need to run this first yeah so the image is loading now let's see what kind of image we are working with so for that i will use plt.im show all right so this is kind of a like a medical image i think yeah it is a breast digital x-ray now um so this is the original image now let's see what what we can get in the negative of this image so to define this function uh, negative i pass in r as an input and the output pixel will be just uh, 255 minus of r so whatever the input pixel is let's say the input uh, value is 255 then the output is zero and if the input is zero the output is 255 so it's completely inverse i will uh, okay so this is defined now i will run this line this was the input we had and for the output we will get something like this okay so uh, like detail wise this and this are similar but i think as in uh, we are we will find much easier to see the details in this case as compared to the one earlier now to draw the plot of this transformation we, we will do something like this so this is the plot of the transformation and it really helps us to visualize what the transformation is doing uh, and we are going to use this plot uh, i mean we are going to plot the transformations throughout this video right so here we will make a function plot results and scale image so this function will help us to better again better visualize the input output and the transformation graph that we have used for example if i call this function here it will give me a very beautiful graph of like the input image then the transformation uh, function used its graph and then what the output we will get so for image negative well, this is the kind of output we get coming to the second type of transformation which is low transformation again loading the image and then plotting what kind of image we have all right so i think you must be familiar with this type of image this is the image that we get from output of a fourier transform now the log transform is we take the input pixel c there is another uh, argument sorry we take the input pixel r there is another argument c which is constant here as one and then uh, what this transformation does is it, it it is c into np root log one plus r and one plus r is so like we are adding one here to avoid log of zero because if r is r is zero then uh, it will be log of zero so we want to avoid that and hence we are adding uh, one here all right so let's see what the output looks like again we will just uh, use this function what we defined earlier okay that's interesting right uh, given an input we use this transform and we get output as this but how to get an intuition of what is happening how to know i mean why when do when do we need to use log transformation what real, what really it does 
so if you see the graph here this is why it comes very handy so if you see the graph um, you can see that it, it's not um, like it's not linear it's there, there is a it's, it's a bit non-linear graph so to get an intuition of it uh, whatever pixels are present in the lower range right so earlier um, like they they were not able to represent themselves this is how i think of it but now uh, we are giving them more importance we are making it uh, more visible and all the details in the lower part of the pixels we are making it more wider and hence like we get something like this now this information was already present in the in in the given image but but it was kind of hidden and through this transformation we are making it more visible then comes another type of transformation the power low gamma transformations so this is the image that we will use for this transformation it is quite similar to log transformation um, i mean we can say that log transformation is kind of a specific uh, example of uh, the gamma transformation the function look like this so for an input input pixel which is r we also have another input one is gamma and one is c c again is a constant and we have set its value to one and gamma is like the value we will raise the pixel to and hence like we call it the gamma transformation and depending on the value of the gamma we'll have uh, different results so first of all we will try with the values less than zero before that if you look at the picture uh, you can see this this is a x-ray picture and it has a fracture in it and maybe this part is a bit uh, like not clearly visible the fracture is here i guess so it is not very clearly visible so we need some type some sort of transformation to make it more visible so let's see what kind of result we get from gamma transformation okay so the value of gamma i have passed here is 0 0.4 and earlier we are testing it with gamma values less than one so what what we can see here what is the change in the images now see here, uh, the details here was mo mostly present in this range of pixels. Now if you take any two pixel here, you see its uh, output pixel, you see that the gap here was much less as compared to here. And what it means is, again, we are trying to uh, show more of, of the pixels in the lower values. And hence, uh, like these pixels, they are now better visible as compared to the one here. Okay, so this function again is uh, used to perform gamma transformation, like so that we can test it with different values of gamma. And here we are using it for gamma value 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Again, this was for 0 0.4. So what do you expect when we pass it gamma value as 0 0.6 and 0 0.3? Will it become more filled or will it like uh, what what do you expect so let's run it and see what happens all right so this is for gamma value 0 0.6 you can see that the tails are getting a bit uh, visible now but still not that much then we have gamma 0 0.4 now we can see that it is pretty much visible and then we have gamma value 0 0.3 Again, this is more visible, but also you can see in this part, uh, it's getting a bit washed up also. Right. It's just a better representation, and this is uh, the same figure we have in the book as well. Uh, the book I'm referring to is the Digital Image Processing by Gonzalez and, uh, and Woods. Now we will test with gamma greater than 1. Okay. So if you uh, look at this image here, it appears to be a bit washed up. So all the details are getting mixed in the higher pixels, or all the white pixels of the image. And now to, uh, to reverse this effect or reverse this defect, we will be using gamma greater than one in this case. So, we are, so again, we're using the same function. We are going to pass gamma three, four and five in this case. So let's see what happens. Alright, so yes, so 
So the first thing to notice is that see how the shape of the graph looks like in this case and compare it uh, to the one we are using earlier. So this one is kind of similar to the log transformation like this, right? And, and the with all the gamma values less than one, it was similar shape. But when gamma is greater than one, the shape changes completely the like i think it is concave or convex i mean one of one of those so it changes completely and again you see the input and the output image so input image it looks like washed away but when you compare it with the output you can see now the details are much better visible as compared to the input and this goes on for all the gamma values and as the gamma value increases the effect increases so you can see here um the runway is more visible, the, the streets are more visible, the sky is more visible as compared to this. And again, the details are already present there. Uh, through the transformations, we are just uh, focusing on which details do we want to enhance and which details do we want to focus on. We are not adding something new, we are just transforming. Again, like we will organize the outputs and again this is also one of the graphs of chapter 3 all right on the next type of function is the contrast stretching or the piecewise linear transformation okay spelling is wrong so this is um, quite different from from all the functions that we have studied so far So this is how it looks like and again it is not defined by one equation throughout the range th throughout the domain but we have different uh, different value of the function for different ranges of the input pixel which, which we can see from here so this is kind of handmade so, so there's no one equation that we can make it from we have to choose these points and these points and again it's kind of handmade so this is how I have written this function now let's see what kind of input and output we get again first of all let's see the image so this is the image and it has a very less contrast and again the name is contrast st uh, stretching so it uh, again let's see let's see first of all the output and then we will try to to uh, have an intuition of what's really happening so this is the input this is the transformation and this is the output so in this case you can see it's again a bit dull um, there's not much different between the foreground and the background uh, and here so you can see that the details are much better visible there is some difference between the foreground and the background now uh, depending on the r1 r r2 r1 s1 and r2 s2 and so we can change this function the second case we are going to use something like this so if you have uh, gone through this this is the thresholding function where we select one uh, threshold all the pixels less than that are converted to zero black and all the pixels greater than that are converted to white the similar thing is happening here uh, the threshold value we have chosen in this case is the mean value of all the pixels right so next is intensity level slicing okay so the uh, the image we have here is the kidney image so it is a scan of a kidney of a person and in this case we want to highlight maybe this vein here or, or whatever it is uh, the kidney and the uh, i think it is some biological name maybe bronchi or something but let's let's say that this is what we want to highlight so for this one we can use intensity transformation now what does intensity transformation looks like well it can be of different forms so one of the form can be like this and how to interpret it is that um, all the pixels so it is like threshold only but instead of just picking one value of threshold we are saying that if the pixel lies between this uh, uh, well this this range then we are going to uh, set it to white otherwise it is black so it is like threshold only but instead of picking just one value we are doing it over a range of pixels 
um so yeah so here uh, the range i have chosen is 140 and 210 so 140 is this value and then 210 is this value now let's see what kind of output we will get here all right so we can see that uh, this part is remaining and the all all else is washed out so this is one way of doing it and then we can have a different kind of uh, intensity level slicing which is something like this so in this like um, the intuition to this is that all the pixels present in this range are are like its intensity is increased keeping the rest of it same so the difference between this and this is that in this case it is a bit highlighted uh, the, the the result is a bit highlighted okay so now the, the last part is bit plane slicing and this is also the most um, interesting part out of all this uh, so for bit plane slicing first of all let's see the image we have so this is a image of a dollar we can see uh, Washington, I guess. Yeah, Washington in the in the in the uh, middle of the note. So, what is bit plane slicing? And this this um, takes advantage of how an image is stored. So, an image is each each pixel. Um, so, each pixel pixel is the building block of an image. So, each pixel is stored. Let's say as an in eight bit image. So what are we doing is we are we are going to separate out the bits. So the first bit, second bit, third bit, up to the eighth bit, and then separate it out, and then make an image out of it. And what we notice is is that the most significant bit, which is the leftmost bit, contributes uh, the most to the to, uh, to the image or, or or like how we see it. And as we go toward the lesser significant bit, it um, like it stores the more uh, certain information about an image and this is quite interesting and it opens up a lot of things that we can do from it in this section we'll just see like how, how to perform this maybe you can think of some uh, like uh, you can think of some more cool things that we can do with it so the function we use here is uh, we pass in the input image and the bit level that we want to extract we convert into a binary representation with a width of 8 and then we extract that part of a uh, uh, bit that we want and uh, oh, and we need to vectorize the function so that instead of a single pixel it uh, we can apply it to the whole of the image in one go so let's jump and see what kind of output we will get it will take some time um, uh, so just wait for some seconds and once we have it we can run this and get the output so this is the input image and this is the bit plane um, the eight, the eighth bit plane or the most significant uh, bit plane right so this is a, uh, this is a binary image and this has uh, the, the most significant bit of all the pixels and as we go from 8th bit to 7th bit, we can see that we lose some information from 7 to 6. And then in the last, we can barely even say what um, the, the final image is. But they all contribute. They all contribute to the final image. And again, like you can make some changes to the bit plane. Maybe you can, you can hide some information here and you can stack it together. You, can pass it the final image will look look the same but now you have your own, own information so this is one of the thing that 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 is being done that has been done uh, on uh, images and many other cool things we can do from it so yeah this was uh, bit plane slicing okay yeah that's it bye